just to give viewers a little bit of a primer, sure. Angie Home Services owns Angie's List. Home Advisor, Angie's List, world's exactly. largest marketplace for home repair and improvement services. So what is your um, exposure of your network in the Carolinas? What kind of insight do you have into it? Yeah, so, so uh, Southeast is a big, important area for us. We watch hurricanes as they come through. We have very sophisticated modeling. We see that as a hurricane approaches, demand goes down a little bit and then it comes back up and we've seen the model stay pretty much the same no matter where uh, it hits and then we try to just make sure our homeowners we help them with communications to prepare ahead of the storm be prepared uh, post storm and do what we can to help them recover what kind of trends do you see in terms of timing after the storm of how quickly people come back in and request these services? What types of services are most popular? Sure. So you've got sort of a 10 to 12 day cycle depending on the hurricane and there's a pretty big dip and then it surges back up towards the end of that cycle and you tend to get everything from uh, simple repair, removing trees, limbs to uh, flood remediation to actually then going in and rebuilding if you've lost part of a roof or a wall or something like that. So it spans the spectrum from basic cleanup to full sort of uh, rebuilding. Now, your services connect homeowners with service professionals, so how do you get around the logistical difficulties of maybe not you know, having mobile service or not being able to recharge your phone, and how do you get the service professionals in? Sure, it's, it's always a challenge. It's what I like to say is, what do you do when there's a snowstorm and everybody needs snow removal? How do you get everybody together? In our case, we have a tremendous platform that allows service providers to still connect with those uh, homeowners. And, and, you know, one of the things we feel good about in these kind of situations is we can get the right homeowner or the right service provider with the right homeowner for that particular need. And that's half the battle is to know what the actual need is and then to get the two connected. So, Is there a surge pricing? Uh, there's not. We have a flat pricing for uh, connecting homeowners and service providers. We do not sort of have any kind of surge pricing. Like I, I want to ask you about the housing market more sure. broadly because we've seen some sort of weakening indicators. How are, what's the link between trends that you see and the broader housing market? Is it more people fixing up their homes because they want to sell them, or do you do better when the housing market weakens because people are making repairs instead of moving? I hate to say we're in a win-win situation, but we are. <laughs> right? The moving is good for us. When you sell a home, buy a home, people want to fix that up, so that you know we benefit from that. At the same time, when you have sort of inventory constraints like we have right now, um, people stay in place and they end up renovating the home they're in. So we're in a good position either way. Now you have been on a bit of a tear. Your stock yeah. has been appreciating quite nicely. Yes. How do you plan to continue that streak and maybe expand margins? As well? Sure. I, I, I like to think of it. We're you know, still relatively low penetration with service requests and service providers. It's a $400 billion marketplace and the biggest opportunity is how do you get the 90% that's offline to come online. This is still one of the largest marketplaces that was offline and is migrating online. And we have some real tailwinds. Millennials are starting to buy homes. As they buy homes, they'll look for services like ours that are on demand. Um, and so I think we're just going to continue to execute. Scale is important. That's why we brought Angie's List and Home Advisor, the two top brands, together. You win in this space with scale. Uh, so we're just going to keep doing more of what we've been doing. Um, I was struck. I mean, as, as Vani mentioned, your stocks are at about a five year high right now. What's interesting is what has been sort of the stock killer of a lot of other companies didn't seem to have as much of an effect. And I'm talking about Amazon because Amazon is in your business and has been sort of expanding into your business. How worried are you about them? And, you know, what does market share look sure. like or what do you know about that picture? I, that I think anyone who ignores the large tech companies, you know, that's, that's not a smart thing to do. At the same time, this is a very complicated space. Having liquidity, supply and demand is difficult. Uh, scale matters for us. And the ability to uh, have that scale allows you to bring the homeowner and service provider together. And I think a lot of the tech companies have found this is one of those markets that's really tough. You, just because you're a big tech company doesn't mean you automatically can jump in this space and have success. And so um, we're just executing on our plan. Our goal is to continue to be the biggest marketplace to uh, bring in the best service providers and let homeowners find the help they need. And, and I think we feel pretty good that that's a long-term moat that's going to be hard to How integrate. does it work? Because this is the gig economy, right? You have people right. signing up to be professionals on your service. How much do they pay you? How much does the homeowner pay you? Yeah, the, the nice thing is homeowners is totally free. 
So mm -hmm. that's the best thing. They don't pay us anything. Service providers pay what they want to pay to get the work they want. So it's a, it's a variable rate. You come in, you tell us how much or how little work uh, you want, and then they scale it up based on uh, what their need is for their particular business. Are you saying it's a bidding process? Not, not a bidding process. They will come in and tell us, I would like to have X amount of work. We'll set their budget and we'll give them that work using algorithms to spread it out, and then they can turn it up or down depending on um, how much or how little work they want. So you're the contractor and they're the subcontractor? Uh, no, they're still the contractor. We just, we charge them to communicate with the homeowner. So once we make that connection, uh, they pay for that communication and they can decide do they want more, do they want less, they're totally in control.